Were you on the USC team that beat Bo Schembechler in yeah. his final game? Yeah, yeah. I think we talked about that last time I was in. But uh, yeah, it was kind of. I think it was Bo's last year, if I believe. It right? was Bo's last game, Matthew. Last game. It was Bo's last game, and Bo uh, Bo uncorked a fake punt with three yeah. minutes to go, and it was called yeah. back due to holding uh, a penalty that I still don't know uh, actually existed. To be quite frankly yeah, with you, you know what I I have I have personal experience with those types of things, getting flags for no reason. <laughs> I can appreciate it. Yes, but but on this on this at this instance, I was the benefactor. So uh, screw Bo Schembechler. Like, I can't even say his no, name. No, I know, but I guess you can say that about uh, him. That was, that, that's a tough one. His last game that was that was brutal. But you know, I, that was a third Rose Bowl game that I had been to at SC, and the first one we had won. So it was kind of uh, I was due. But also, I, I think we discussed this the last time you were here, but this being a whole new audience, and we're here on Peacock, where your yes. show can be seen the, every single day after it airs on NBC and Young Rock, um, that uh, I, I remember uh, sitting up there in the Rose Bowl press box watching the game and thinking there were two number 55s on defense that day, and it was really only one, and it was Junior Seau playing out of his mind or, his or, mind. or like he always played. What was he like yeah. as a teammate, Matthew? He was great. You know, he was my roommate uh, freshman year. Huh. So we roomed together, and so he being about as raw as you can be as an individual, uh, being a Prop 48 guy, so he didn't play the first season, first year, uh, just going to school, he was maniacal in about everything he did, if you can imagine. Um, still had that Islander in him a little bit. I remember stealing a lava lava from him, a little you know those little skirt things that he uh, wore. <laughs> but um, even back then, he was a little bit of uh, he was a little manic, you know. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit up and down all the time. But but again, a what a tear on the field. The guy just wanted to play. He just wanted to go, and he, you know he's one of those just true football guys. Um, and it was kind of obviously a very sad uh, ending. To it, uh, you know, and I kind of felt I felt that we had played each other uh, in the pros, you know, years later, and and I went to hit him on a play, and he looked at me like he didn't even know who I was. So there was that. I saw that a little earlier on, you know, that there was a little bit of disconnect, some something that was going on there, which hmm. again uh, was sad. But I mean, I guess it made him who he was in a first ballot Hall of Famer posthumously, and and um, yes. I, I'll never forget that day. Uh, I, I'm like, this is the the greatest defensive performance I've ever seen. He was everywhere on the he field that day. He could not be stopped. He, he couldn't. Was, I remember that he was running around, just like you said. He was running around, seemed to be everywhere on the field. I remember that distinctly, just like like you do. And um, uh, again, thankfully, I was on the good side of that. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.